Welcome back into the Vandy Sports Podcast. Joey Dwyer and Billy Derrick back here with you for a full recap of uh, tonight's scrimmage, first fall scrimmage of uh, of fall camp. Of course, they'll have one more next weekend, a little bit of an earlier start gearing up for the early start against Virginia Tech uh, here in just a couple weeks, which is crazy that we're already that close. But Joey, it is football time and we're going to answer some questions. Uh, we do have some mailbag questions that we put out before the scrimmage. So we'll try to answer those and we'll go over uh, kind of a broad overview of, of what we saw, uh, Joey offensively, me defensively. And uh, and yeah, then we'll take some questions. But first, want to get to our sponsor for the mailbag, Sutherland and Belk, family-owned injury law firm. If you or a loved one has been hurt or in an accident, give Taylor or Russell a call, 615 846 6,200 to see what your rights are and if they can help. Joey, we'll start with you. Uh, just broad thoughts offensively. Now, obviously, there was a lot to take away, over 120 plays uh, in, in tonight's scrimmage. I think they played almost six quarters, which, which uh, you know, was, was a lot of football. So you got to see a lot offensively. What did you take away? Yeah, I didn't think it was an awesome day for the offense. I thought the defense won the day, but – the offense did show some flashes. I think my overwhelming positive takeaway was the offensive line. And uh, I think Clark and Tim Beck kind of got at that as well. Like they were more physical up front. And I thought they opened more holes, particularly for the run game. Uh, Chase Gillespie, I thought, had a good game, uh, was efficient in his carries, only had nine of them, I think, but uh, did a good job with those. Cedric Alexander uh, had a really nice run that was called back. So I liked what I saw from the offensive line more so than I thought I would. And that was my overwhelming positive takeaway. But Ball security was an issue. Uh, they turned it over more than I think Tim Beck would like. Uh, he was talking about how they were slow getting into their alignments and things along those lines. Um, I thought Diego Pavia ran it smoother than any of the other quarterbacks did. I thought the operation was good uh, with him as a whole. I think he only turned it over once, made some really nice throws. So uh, that was my standout quarterback of the day. I thought he was far and away the best out of them. Uh, Nate Johnson seemed to be a little off with his timing and um, – I just didn't think that he was at the level Pavia was at today. And uh, it started to become a little bit more of a theme. So uh, I wonder if Pavia has a leg up. Uh, we talked about this earlier, too. I don't know if they bring in Diego Pavia uh, with the scheme and everything along those lines, uh, if he wasn't going to have a really good chance to start. I think Johnson's got out playing the rest of camp now because he's obviously got the connections. And uh, I think he's done a lot for himself early. Joseph McVeigh, another standout today, uh, really made some plays. I think his yardage would – probably wow a lot of the people on the board if they haven't read it yet. Um, a lot of it was late in practice, but man, he's just around the ball a lot, always seems mm -hmm. to be open. And I think that's going to really help him. I don't know how much he's going to play. Uh, cause he, I don't know that he's often running with first teamers, but man, he's going to, if he continues to do this, he'll be a factor. Uh, finally saw something from Micah Bell. Uh, but again, I think they've, I've got some concerns with their receivers where I don't have concerns uh, as their tight ends. Cole Spence, really good today. Diego Pavia seemed to have a connection with him. I don't know how much Stowers played. I didn't really notice him a whole lot, but uh, the two of them paired together, I think are really going to be a force for them. Uh, and then again, the running backs, Newberry, I thought some did, did some good things, but ball security, probably an issue for him uh, thus far. Monty Jones was all right. Gillespie, I thought was really good. Uh, Johan Cardenas, I thought was good too. So, I think there were some good takeaways from the offense, but overall um, still probably not the level they need to be at. And I don't know if that's any surprise, but uh, I will say if I had to make a wager on the quarterback battle, and I'm sure we would have talked about this uh, at some point otherwise, probably have to go Diego Pavia at this point unless Nate Johnson or uh, Drew Dickey or Blaze Burlowitz completely outplays him the rest of the camp. It's kind of hard for me to see another outcome right now. Yeah, I'm with you. Defensively, I think, like you said, the offense was not great. Thus, I think the defense won the day. I don't think it was by a wide margin. There were still a lot of mistakes that were made. There were a few dropped interceptions that, that would have been pick sixes. Um, you know, some open field tackling issues, which is is a given. I mean, it's the first scrimmage of fall camp. Um, but, you know, I was encouraged overall. You know, I, I think I start with C.J. Taylor. He, he did still um, – you know, he, he did still have the brace on his left knee, but overall, Joey, I mean, he was flying around, uh, which is a good sign. Um, no surprise for, from from a guy like C.J. Taylor. And I mentioned this on the board. I think he's going to be a little bit more aggressive this year. Uh, just so far in fall camp, I feel like he has 
uh, almost played with a little bit more confidence. Uh, Prince Kali, I thought, looked really good. Um, the defense as a whole, especially early on, uh, felt like they were bringing a lot of pressure to try to con confuse uh, both quarterbacks or, or really any quarterback that was out there. But specifically early on in the scrimmage, I noticed that, um, that there was a lot of pressure. Uh, but on the offensive side, like you mentioned with, with Pavi, I did think you know he did a pretty good job uh, handling that early pressure. Um, so and pressure is going to be a theme, Joey, th this entire season. I, th I thought I thought they were able to bring some pressure at, at times and and got to the quarterback. Um, Cornerback position, Tyson Russell, I thought, covered and tackled well uh, overall. Um, the other guy, Colby Taylor, is, you know, I, I hesitate to call the guy a freak or, you know, overhype him, but he's the best corner on the team by, by I might even say, a long shot. Um, you know, he talks a lot. He made a heck of a play that, I'll keep secret for now, but we did put it on the board about what, ha what happened. And, um, you know, I think fans are going to like that. And, and Clark, I put out what he said about him that, that he even has to, you know, he's got to channel, you know, some of his, 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 uh, energy and, and personality sometimes, um, you know, to, to win for this team to win. He's got to, he's got to show that, but also can't cross the line of course. But Colby Taylor, uh, was, was pretty active today. Didn't, you know, didn't, wow us with a ton of plays but i thought the plays he did make were were pretty loud jalen lackey uh young freshman db i thought uh made some pretty good open field tackles at times and you know he's a guy that's going to have to play this season with marlon jones who we know is already out and of course you confirmed today joey that um mark davis is is actually out for the season so two transfer corners that we're going to play a lot jalen lackey is going to have to step up and step in and play um, and looked pretty good today. So that was encouraging. Safety-wise, I uh, already talked about C.J. Taylor. Jalen Gilbert was a guy that uh, that that played as well. Uh, of course, tonight he's going to have to play this season. He's not the biggest guy. I worry about size a little bit with him. But uh, looks like he knows what he's doing. And everybody gets better in this Clark Lee defense, whether it's Marlon Sewell. Um, C.J. Taylor can still improve, right? Everybody has gotten better. Um, and Jalen Gilbert, a guy that, uh, will be, I don't know about forced into action. You know, I think he was going to play anyway this year, but just with some injuries in the secondary um, and maybe not, you know, I mean, you've got depth behind the, the safety position, right? But all of a sudden, I think Gilbert has emerged as a guy that's going to have to play this year, and he looked good tonight. Uh, Dante Carter, of course, uh, he didn't stand out as much as I thought he might. It's just one scrimmage, right? Uh, there's, there's no concern, but... Um, you know, he also didn't make any obvious, just crucial mistakes, I don't think, either. So um, he did have an interception. There were a few interceptions tonight. Um, and, again, you can't – I want to throw this out there. This is the first fall, fall camp scrimmage. Take everything we say tonight and on the board, Twitter, whatever, with a grain of salt. Um, and then on, I guess I didn't mention much of the defensive line. I thought Bradley Mann really showed out uh, mm -hmm. tonight, Joey. He uh, made some plays. Corday Sidner was really active. I like him a lot. I think he can be a guy that does some things on the edge, and they need that. Um, you know, it's almost like Sidner has stepped in and and been more of a factor than even Darren Agu. Um, and Darren Agu, that I think, I think there's some whether it's pressure or not. I, I just think he's got to perform. Uh, he wasn't a guy that really stood out tonight. Whether you take that. Uh, with a grain of salt or not, but Corday Sidner and Bradley Mann were a couple of the standouts on the defensive line, Joey. So, um, yeah, overall, though, I, th I thought it was a pretty good day defensively. There were definitely times where there were busts in coverage or uh, not getting to the quarterback quick enough or whatever it might have been. There were, there were mistakes, but I thought overall the defense won, and that's going to be the case, I think. You know, you've got a really good D.C. and Clark Lee, and you've got some pretty good players, Patterson and, and Longwell, all over the field. You know, didn't mention a ton of them, but uh, mm -hmm. just guys that were all over the field, very active. So uh, that's what I've got defensively. Um, and, and, Joey, we do have some questions to get to. Don't want to uh, labor on too long tonight because we do want to direct people to the board and go check out what we've got uh, with uh, whether it's stats or, or our reactions and our takeaways offensively and defensively. But, Joey, let's hop into the questions. Uh, we do have, I think we've got four pretty good questions here and some are, some of them are two, three part questions. So we'll go and hop in <laughs> funny name M Lang VFL. So we got a VFL on the board. 
What does the running back depth chart look like, and how good are they going to be? Joey, we've actually got a uh, position preview series coming out of the running back, so uh, stay tuned for that. But the depth chart looks like this. Cedric Alexander is running back one. Tim Beck even even hinted at that, that the first guy he mentioned was Seti, that everybody calls him. Um, that And Clark Lee mentioned that today uh, as well. Joey, that first run, he had a pretty long run that – I know you mentioned Clark said that was different, right? That was different than what we've seen from Cedric. And I think he's gotten, he's gotten a little bit faster. He's maybe lighter, a little lighter on his feet. Um, and so I, I think, I think Cedric Alexander might surprise some people this year. I'm not saying he's going to blow people out of the water, uh, but he has improved. And that run was a good indication. I looked over at you and said, that's a little bit of a different set. Uh, Cedric Alexander that we've seen. That was some breakout speed that I maybe didn't expect. Now, again, it's just a scrimmage. You're playing against your own team. How does it look in, in game action? You never know. But I think after him is is still a question. Does Newberry step up? I know you like Newberry a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Monty Jones was a guy that that got a lot of carries tonight. Johan Cardenas got a lot of carries. It was late, but um, you know, and then Gillespie. So I don't know who steps into that second spot. I tend to favor Newberry like you do. But I also like Monty Jones and the role he can have on uh, on, on third downs and in the goal line. He's a big kid. And uh, same with Chase Gillespie. Chase Gillespie. I think Monty Jones is a little bit of a, a, a just a stronger Chase Gillespie and can run between the tackles. Um, and Newberry's a change of pace guy. But that'll be interesting, Joey. And the second part of this question, how does Cardenas and Monty Jones look? Um, I thought they looked pretty good today. They got a lot of carries. Uh, Cardenas is obviously really young. Not sure how much he's going to play this year, but Monty Jones is a big guy, and if he can emerge, Joey, that that's that's exactly what the doctor ordered for this offense because you, you need a, you, you, it. Never hurts to have a big back like that that can that can really really tout the the football. Yeah, I've seen two runs this fall when I've been there. I think I missed two days. I've seen two runs this fall that have kind of blown me away. One of them was Cedric Alexander a couple of practices ago hurdling someone, uh, and then today Cedric Alexander's touchdown run that got me called back so mm -hmm. and Tim Beck was talking about this I think if you look at it Cedric Alexander is the one uh he's really emerged in that way um and he said he would like to have three guys emerge uh, I don't know that he's gotten that yet I think if in a perfect world AJ Newberry steps up enough to be the two he's got to hold on to the ball though and consistently make plays I think he's the second most talented guy they have for sure Monty Jones I think could be really good in short yardage uh, I haven't seen him make a play that's really stood out. Newberry made a couple tonight that um, maybe caught my attention. Um, and then uh, Chase Gillespie, I thought, I had kind of written off in a sense, but he had a good night. He really. looked good tonight, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Cedric Alexander's the only one that stood out to me uh, really at all throughout the fall, but uh, I think they've got a lot of ceiling in Newberry. And then the two older guys uh, in Monty Jones and Chase Gillespie give them something they haven't had uh, with the other two guys with Alexander and Newberry. So I think – you're going to see three of them play probably pretty consistently. Cardenas, I think, is good, but hasn't made a play that's really fully caught my attention yet. I think he's just been fine. He's been good. Um, but, yeah, Cedric Alexander's the one. Not sure where it goes from there. Perfect world. It's A.J. Newberry, though. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a ton of talent. Yeah, I mean, he showed some of his getting to the edge and, and breaking a few tackles um, that, that we've, we've seen. Like you said, ball security needs to hold on to the ball. Uh, with those big runs, and that is a huge priority under Tim Beck. Not that it isn't with any other running backs coach or or offensive coordinator, but you can't turn the ball. I mean, if Monty Jones takes care of the ball better, Monty Jones is going to be that second guy. So um, that's really going to be interesting to watch. The stylistically, do you see a guy like Newberry more, or do you see like a guy like Monty Jones more, who may be a better run blocker, which they're going to do a lot of, um, and, you know, and can just pound because they want to be physical as well. That's something Tim Beck talked about. They want to be a physical run first offense um, within this offense who fits better. I think that that's going to be a question, but either way, top, those top three guys are going to play. Um, don't, don't forget about Gillespie. Um, I, I still think, you know, Monty Jones is probably ahead of him. Uh, but again, Gillespie is, is still there and, and fighting competing. And I thought he, I thought he did play well tonight. So uh, he's another guy not to forget about mm -hmm. G barks 24 sticking with the offensive theme here. How do the accuracy and arm strength of Pavia and Johnson compare on short, intermediate, and deep throws? We'll start with that question. Um, 
on, on short throws, I, I would say it's pretty even. I mean, it's not like Johnson is 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 just awful at short throws. I, I know he he definitely missed a couple tonight, but the ones he missed were more intermediate and deep. So both, I think, you know, I don't think one is super uh, far ahead of the other on short throws. Short throws are short throws. You know, I mean, you could you could say all five quarterbacks look the same on short throws. Um, intermediate throws, I would say Pavia so far from what I've seen in fall camp and the scrimmage included, Pavia is better in the, in the inter intermediate throws. Um, it's almost like he's got a softer, more catchable ball. Um, and he, he's accurate. Diego Pavia so far has – now, he's, he's not all the time. He's not 100% accurate. But compared to Johnson and even the other quarterbacks, Pavia is the most accurate quarterback on the team. Um, and it's really impressive because he's, he's a shorter guy. Um, you know, he had a really impressive um, pass in the end zone to, to Spence tonight. And I just think he really – he sees the field a lot better than any of the other quarterbacks. Uh, he's played a lot of football. He's been productive. So – on the intermediate throws, definitely put Pavia above Johnson. Deep throws, I don't hate Johnson's deep ball. I think I think if he is able in these next few weeks to really re refine that, I think you could see a different Nate Johnson. But again, we just we haven't really seen him consistently hit deep, deep balls, and the, and they didn't really try. Like they didn't, there weren't a ton of intermediate and deep ball throws tonight. To, I mean, to be to be quite honest, um, there were some opportunities, and and both quarterbacks missed some throws here and there, but. Even on the deep balls, Pavia might have thrown one or two tonight, Joey. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I can't. There were so many quarterbacks that were in and out tonight. I can't remember. But even on the deep balls, I would probably put Pavia there. Johnson, kid, I like, I again, I don't hate his deep ball. You just haven't seen a ton of it. And when you have, it hasn't been consistent. So that's, that's where I would go with those short, intermediate, and deep throws. Yeah, I don't think you're far off. I think Pavia throws a really catchable ball, but – also, I think it's a little interception prone with kind of how it sticks in the air. Cole Spence, I think, is a real candidate for him just because of his frame to mm -hmm. be a guy that he leans on. It felt like he's done that uh, through the first nine or so practices. Feels like they've developed a bit of chemistry. Johnson throws a really pretty ball, though. It's just a matter of how accurate and consistent it is. I think, I mean, I've said this all camp. I think Johnson's their most talented quarterback, um, and he looks the part. Uh, the throws, when it's on, Oh my gosh, Billy, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. But I just think Pavia runs the operation a little bit better. And I think the offense gets in and out of their breaks a little bit quicker uh, with Pavia at the helm and uh, feels like they're a little bit more steady. Whereas with Johnson, uh, there's been some more miscommunications and things along those lines. But uh, I'm also interested to see what happens when Nate Johnson goes live more consistently. He did that in the mm -hmm. spring and Tim Beck seemed to like what he saw. So um, it is interesting to me too, this is kind of off topic, but Clark Lee basically said he's going to give Beck and kill complete autonomy over the quarterback competition. And mm -hmm. they're going to come to him with their decision and they'll discuss it and why they decided that way. So, uh, that's going to be interesting to me, but in terms of, and I know this doesn't answer the question, but in terms of ball security, Pavia seems to be the guy and in terms of, uh, how they've gotten in and out of their operations, probably been him as well, but I hesitate to completely count Nate Johnson out just because of, um, just because of his talent and his yeah, the ball he throws, the speed he has. If Nate Johnson puts it all together in the second half of camp, watch out. I think he could really be a factor. But yeah, I would say Pavia uh, probably has a little bit better feel in the intermediate game for now, um, especially in terms of like communication. Uh, I don't know that the ball was prettier coming out of his hand, but it's maybe easier to catch if he makes the right read. So uh, that's what I've got still that's not to say Pavia doesn't force anything or anything along those lines. Cause I think a lot of my concern with him coming into the year was it's kind of erratic. Um, and we've seen that in times, but I think he's been more steady than any other guys they've had. Yeah. The timing is, I think is the word I think of the timing with Pavia just looked better. Um, mm -hmm. whether it was a short or intermediate throw, but second part of the question here with Pavia's deep ball, is it not accurate or is it a Mac Jones situation where he floats the ball and has trouble getting it there? I think that second part of that is is a little bit like Pavia has the he has the good idea with his deep ball and good intentions, mm -hmm. but just might float it at times. Um, not I don't know. I, it's hard to describe. Like I, I I need to get a more I need to get more of a look at Pavia's deep ball. I don't think I think we all know he doesn't have the strongest arm. I think mm -hmm. we've known that. But and so I don't like can they make can can they call up a 
a 60 yard, a 50, 60 yard deep ball. <laughs> you know, I like we know Nate Johnson, but like with Pavia in there, like what's the ceiling of this offense deep ball wise? I, I, I genuinely wonder that. And again, the focus Beck talked about tonight was not just dropping back and airing the ball out to their mm-hmm. receivers. Like that was that that was not a focus tonight. The focus was operationally running the ball, trying to establish a physical offense. So even with this question, Joey, it's hard to answer because it wasn't a goal tonight of theirs. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is next week. And even in practice, we just haven't seen a ton of deep balls. Yeah, we haven't. And that's how I describe it too. Like it kind of floats a little bit. And we know that arm strength has been a question. Um, I think Johnson's again looks prettier and maybe some of the mm-hmm. other quarterbacks do, but it's just all about like ball placement, if that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like Pavia has the right idea a lot of the time. So I am a little concerned about it. I mean, they haven't done it a whole lot this fall. Uh, that's probably by design too, because I think their offense is not going to be quite as deep ball oriented. Um, I think he's capable of it. I just don't think he's like going to be the greatest bandy quarterback you've ever seen in terms of throwing the deep ball. He doesn't have uh, the arm like an AJ Swan did last year. Yeah, and and I don't know that you you have to have that if you're at Vanderbilt. Like not I, in this I, offense, I, no. Within this offense, yeah. Um, so again, that's something we'll talk more about, especially as we see uh, those two quarterbacks perform, and especially in the next scrimmage. Got a couple more here. Jerry Lawless asked if uh, if we were in the press box tonight. We were not in the press box. Um, <laughs> the AC. Uh, was was not out. That's it's not going to be out this season. Don't worry. But um, we were Nothing actually in press box, the First Bank Stadium press box. No, no, the AC was not quite fully installed yet, so we were not in the press box tonight. Honestly, wasn't mad about it. We got a little bit of a closer look um, at what was going on, so we were in the stands, probably what 10, 15 rows up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, fun way to watch a game. You were you know up close with the action. Uh, you were able to see interaction between coach and player on the sidelines, you know, able to see injuries, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but Jerry's getting at how the renovation is coming along and it, it's beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. the North end zone, you know, you can, you can watch all the construction cams you want, but walking in there, I, I honestly, like I couldn't believe what I was seeing because Joe, I mean, like you said, we haven't gotten that look since the last home game of last season. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and so it looked totally different. Very nice. I mean, even when it got dark, the First Bank Stadium uh, lit up and was a pretty cool look. And obviously, they're not done with the North End Zone yet, but uh, looked really good. The South End Zone, obviously, for not not as further uh, along, but even lower, like field level, you can tell they're getting somewhere. Uh, just just even in the South End Zone as well, they put a lot of work in there. Uh, and even Brian Longwell uh, mm-hmm. commented, he was like, "Man, this is awesome! Like, I can't wait to play here." So I think the players are genuinely excited uh, to play in a nicer stadium. Clark Lee mentioned it, and my phone actually died right before he talked about it, and it was some good comments. So hopefully I'll try to find those and get those to you guys. But um, it it felt like, I don't know, Joe, obviously it's the first scrimmage. No game has been played yet, but it's almost like, okay, the stadium looks better. Its product looks a little bit better too. Yeah, it looked good to me tonight. Uh, I thought the – I think the – what is it, the south end zone, the one with the basketball facility, looks really, really good. No, north. Uh, that's the north. That's the north. I'm yeah. not good with my end zone directions, really. <laughs> but, uh, I thought that side looked really good. I think the scoreboard looks really good. Uh, the turf looks good. So it's not done, and I think the construction's still going to be inconvenient getting in and out of there. They're not going to have all the gates open. Um, it's probably going to be somewhat of a similar entry process to what it was in previous years. But, you know, I liked what they had, and I thought the, the turf uh, looking good was also – Another thing, too, because that's mm-hmm. obviously been a point of discussion with injuries and such over the years. But, um, yeah, no complaints for me about how it looked. I think a lot of the guys uh, got out there and were kind of in awe of what it looked like because they hadn't seen it uh, since the season ended either. Brian Longwell said that. Uh, I think I saw Marlon Sewell kind of just gazing around the stadium when he walked on the field. So um, I think that was cool for them. And uh, they had to go play in an environment like that before the season started. So, uh, yeah, man, I think it was good. I think uh, – I think the stadium looks better than uh, maybe I had even thought it would look uh, at this point, although still a work in progress. Yeah, still a lot to be done, but call me crazy for this, Joey. But I think even as an opponent walking in there, you see that north end zone. 
and again, I'm not saying the North End Zone is striking much fear into Alabama, Texas, and and, and the home opponents for Vanderbilt. But I just think that that kind of, okay, we're in a nice place for the home team. It's a little bit of a more confident feeling um, as opposed to last year where you're playing in a construction site. And Clark even joked about it. He's like, yeah, it's a little bit different now that as opposed to last year's Dust Bowl, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what it was looking like last year. So, uh, yeah, I just think it, it does help uh, everything. I mean, you're still rolling the football out, playing there, you know, on a normal size football field. But uh, I, I do think that that helps. But, yeah, Jerry, renovation is is uh, is going well. Obviously, it may seem long to uh, to some fans, but the north end zone will be done before the season and the south end zone will be done before next season. So uh, I'll be here before you know it. Mm-hmm. Lastly, Joey, from OG706, does the offensive line look more physical? I think they do. And, again, I always hesitate to answer this question way too positively. Uh, I've done this before. I definitely probably did it last year at fall camp. Um, and so I want to walk. I want to tread lightly. But, and, again, you're playing against a Vanderbilt defensive line. We've done this before. Chris has probably done this before as well. But I even looked at you during the scrimmage. And I said, Okay, this looks like this team can can play big boy football better than they did last year. It's not. It's almost like at times last year that wasn't even a focus or, or an intent. Like mm-hmm. you know, no, they're going to drop back and and let Swan air it out. That's what that was his skill set, right? I mean, other, up until Walter Taylor went into the game, you know, there was no threat of the quarterback running. Mm-hmm. So you've got the quarterback able to run. Obviously, you want to establish a run with the running backs. I just thought they went to it more. I mean, and you, t- Tim Beck said it. I mean, we want to be a physical offense. We want to see how physical this offensive line can be. And we saw it, Joey, with with how long the offensive line played. I, I, they're tired tonight. You saw a lot of reps from, from different guys, a lot of reps with the starters, that the guys that we think will start. But I was, I was impressed. It's one scrimmage. but And, again, I don't think they're going to be a, a group that just mauls people up and down the field. But I th- I'm, I'm more encouraged at this point than I was at the start of fall camp that this team on a third and three can can hand it to to the running back and, and get the first down. I mean, I you know, it just didn't feel like they could do that last year. Yeah. Here's what I'll say about it. It's a more physical offensive line than I think Vanderbilt is used to. Maybe it's not a more physical offensive line than Mississippi yeah. State or Ole Miss is used to. But for Vanderbilt, I think it's a real step forward. I think they have guys who – are real pieces there. And uh, I think the biggest thing for now is just going to be cohesiveness. They played a lot tonight uh, with the main guys, as you said, I think in an effort to be cohesive, I actually mentioned, or uh, meant to ask Clark about that, but didn't, but uh, that was kind of my feel is that uh, they are better on the offensive line. They're getting more push. They're opening a few more holes, but I just have some questions about what it looks like against a better defensive line. Cause I don't, I think that's one of Vanderbilt's, weaker groups although I think they have a lot of guys who can contribute so yeah definitely more physical uh I think better in a lot of senses Stephen Hubbard was one that stood out as a leader tonight Mm -hmm. and I thought that was pretty impactful to see they've got some older guys there who uh kind of have some edge to them so I like what they've got uh with the caveat that uh it is for Vander I like what they have for Vanderbilt and if I was covering say Georgia I don't know if I would love what they had yeah, Stephen Hubbard and Chase Mitchell are two guys that, from our from our vantage point, will start and will will play a heavy role in what this team does offensively. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to really take too much from from the offensive line so far. Mm-hmm. But it hasn't been bad. Like I can't, you know, we're not sitting here saying, man, this offensive line just just cannot protect and they can't create any holes. Um, I think at fall camp at at times we were saying that Um, Mm -hmm. we really haven't been able to say that, Joe. And I think that has been encouraging. Now there were some, like, I think it was the Berlowitz drive, you know, one of his first drives, they struggled, but you know, other like, it's almost like when, when Pavia is in, everybody plays a little bit better. I'm going back to Pavia here, but Mm -hmm. again, kind of points to, to, to what's going on in the quarterback room. Um, but yeah, offensive line, I think, I think should be better. We'll see how that progresses and who ends up starting, who is the starting five. It's going to be another kind of battle battle to watch, but Joey, that'll do it for the questions. Um, and we're going to try to do this next week as well. After same sort of format, we'll let you guys fire in some questions. We'll answer them. 
after next week's scrimmage. It's an earlier scrimmage around 11 a.m. in order to get prepped up for Virginia Tech, uh, which will be here in a couple of weeks as well. But, Joey, any uh, any party thoughts after after tonight's scrimmage? No, I thought it was good. Um, the offense, I think, really has to clean up the ball security. Tim Beck was talking about tonight how one of the offenses he coached, I think, at New Mexico State didn't fumble uh, with their running backs the entire year. I don't think that's going to be the case for Vanderbilt this year. Um, I think they've got some things to clean up. But, uh, you know, I don't feel terrible, Billy. I still i am going to stick to the prediction I had with wins in the preseason. But uh, I think they've got some guys who could maybe exceed my expectations. I think their tight ends are really good. Um, I think their offensive line – for their standards is good. Um, Diego Pavi, I still have my questions about, but um, thought he was good tonight. Defense, I think, has always looked good to me. Uh, they've won pretty much all the days of fall camp. So I like what they've got, Billy, uh, with the caveat of I like what they've got for Vanderbilt. But uh, we'll keep covering fall camp and uh, check out the Cole Spence feature, guys. Billy, uh, we're doing a we did a tight end preview, and uh, Billy kept shouting out the Cole Spence feature. So. Uh, a lot of love going over to Billy right now, but uh, also one thing I wanted to mention, Bryson Coleman uh, broke his collarbone, and he is out for, I think, a minimum of six weeks or something along those lines. So he'll miss some time, but might actually work out for them because uh, he can still redshirt once he gets back in the lineup. So that's going to be a loss, but I don't know that he's a guy they were relying on. Same with Mark Davis, although he is certainly a guy that uh, they were relying on. A lot of guys going to have to step up on the defense and uh, – where I'm looking for guys to settle on the offense is wide receiver and offensive line the rest of the way. So see how it goes, Billy. But uh, we're going to continue coverage of fall camp. Uh, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll be there Monday, and I don't even know the rest of the schedule. We're tired. We got to get some sleep. But either way, um, Mikhailin Young was again another guy Clark updated. Well, it wasn't much of an update, but um, <laughs> actually, but he did mention at the end of the video there. Really isn't much new, which I don't think is great news. But either way, you know, we'll continue to track that. Uh, we will continue to be at fall camp. See how this – I'll keep watching this defense, see how the defense progresses. Again, I thought it was a good day today. Um, but still some operational things to clean up, um, especially on the defensive line. I'm still tracking them. Um, and I did want to ask Clark tonight, like, what did you see at the point of attack? You know, I know you got to go back and watch the film, but – you know, what, what, what did you see with the defensive line specifically? So uh, again, a lot more questions to answer, but next weekend we will, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll get a scrimmage recap in and, and uh, we'll be, we'll be rocking and rolling, but that's it for another Vandy sports podcast. That's Joey Dwyer. I'm Billy Derrick. Thanks for watching.